Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here. Today's technique I call glow stamping. Now your images don't actually glow, but they look like they do when stamped on a dark or vibrant cardstock. Now I have a few ways of doing this technique. So bear with me if you don't have the first inks I talk about because I have other options for you. But basically we're stamping with bright colors on dark color cardstock which is hard to achieve without the tricks I share today. I also have some fun card designs, including clear card overlays and easel card designs. So stick with me, I've got a lot to share. I even have a few tricks and hacks for you along the way. Okay, now the first ink that really works well with glow stamping or stamping images that look like they glow on darker cardstock is Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Ink. You do not need this ink for this technique, but it works very well. I will talk about other options later on. Distress Oxide ink is unique in that it is kind of has some dye ink properties and kind of has some pigment ink properties. Dye inks absorb into a paper and don't stamp well on dark colored cardstocks. Pigment inks sit on top of the paper, so they do show up a bit more on dark colored cardstocks. So oxide inks have a little bit of both, so they do work on darker colored cardstocks a bit. However, I find that it works better when you use Distress Oxide inks along with a white pigment ink. There are a couple white pigment inks that I like, and one of them is the Shark Tooth from Ink on 3. This ink pad comes very juicy and it's a nice bright white pigment ink. Another that I like is Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink, which I've used a lot in videos. It also comes well inked in a bright white. However, I've never mentioned this in videos, but I like to keep two white ink pads. One that I keep re-inking, so it has a lot of ink in it, and one that I don't re-ink as much, so it's a little bit less ink, so it's a little drier. That way I can st stamp a softer white or more vibrant white. So on the left, I have a newer ink pad that has a lot of ink in it, and you can see it's a little more vibrant. On the right, I have an ink pad that I've had for a long time, and I don't really re-ink much, so it gives a little bit less vibrant of a result. I just like both of them, and these work well for today's technique, really either of them, but that's something to keep in mind. I don't usually use re-inkers a whole lot except for white pigment ink pads. I think it's good to have a re-inker so you can keep it either well inked or let it be a little bit drier like the one on the right. I actually like the one on the right, the one that has less ink in the ink pad. I feel like it gives better results, but it's something to keep in mind. The one on the left is definitely more white. And remember, this is a pigment ink, so this ink kind of sits on top of the surface, thus it shows on this dark black cardstock. Now let's try these different inks on dark cardstock. This is black cardstock. Here is Distress Oxide ink alone. This is the uh, Twisted Citron color. I like to double stamp. I do that a lot to make sure I get good results. And you can see that is really bright. It looks like it glows on that dark cardstock. Since it's part pigment kind of properties and part dye kind of properties, it is a little wet on the surface. So you do want to heat set it or let it dry. Now over here, I'm going to stamp with a really juicy white ink pad. Look how vibrant that is. This is a pigment ink, so we definitely want to heat set that. Now check out what happens when you stamp with the oxide ink on top of the white ink. Then it really glows. Look at how that color shows up on the dark black cardstock. So by combining white pigment ink with oxide ink on top, you get really vibrant results. I'll show more of that later. Now here I'm using Cracked Pistachio and just stamping straight on black cardstock. Next to it I'm stamping first with a white ink and then I'm stamping with the same oxide ink right on top of that. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Look at how it looks like it glows on that black. Now I know not everyone has Distress Oxide inks. These work really well on dark cardstocks, especially if you put white pigment ink under it. That's because of the pigment property that these inks have. However, most folks only have dye inks, or that's what they have most of, especially me. I have mostly dye inks. This is a dye ink from Concord and Light that stamps beautiful on white cardstock. But look at it, it doesn't show up on dark cardstock. That's because dye ink absorbs into the paper. It doesn't sit on top. So it just absorbs in, so you can't see it on dark cardstock. 
However, you can make dye ink show up on dark color cardstock if you first stamp with white pigment ink. So you don't have to have oxide inks for this technique. They do show up more and glow more on the dark cardstock. But if you only have a white pigment ink pad and a dye ink colored ink pad, you can get a similar look. So there I did white pigment ink and I cleaned off my stamp. Now I'm stamping dye ink on top and look at that. That looks like it glows too. So you can use your regular dye inks, your Concord and Ninth, Hero Arts, Gina K Designs, whatever brand dye ink you have on top of white pigment ink and it'll glow. So that's a great way to use your inks creatively and use your inks on darker or vibrant colors of cardstock. And look at how it looks like it's glowing on there. Now that I've demonstrated a bit about this, let's really put this into action and do a bunch of different backgrounds. Now you could use any images for this, but I do find it most effective if you have images with solid area. So I thought I'd use this new Concord and Ninth flower turnabout background stamp. The cool thing about this is you can stamp in multiple colors. So I'm able to demonstrate more colors of this glow technique to you. So with the turnabout stamp, you stamp it four times, rotating each time. I've used these turnabout stamps many times in videos. I think they're brilliant and a great way to come up with a multicolor background, which allows you to create a very simple card. There is a coordinating die set available for that turnabout that cuts out the little flowers and leaves and also has this large you are simply amazing die combo, which I'll use later in this video. But let's right now do lots of stamping with the turnabout stamp. This is how you use it. Turnabout stamps come with this clear printed guide. You can see it says this side up, up on the top. I'm taking my stamp and I'm lining it up with the black printing on this guide. So I'm laying that large stamp right onto it. It's very easy to line up the clear stamp with that black printing. So there you can see it's kind of stuck to that temporarily. Now I'm taking a stamp positioner. This is the Misty stamping tool and also the Concord and Ninth turnabout jig. This is a six by six piece of plastic with an X kind of engraved right down the center. You could make your own if you want. I'll link to a video where I made my own, but this is inexpensive and you can use it over and over. Now I'll take the black X on my guide and line it up with the black or with the engraved X on the jig. Once I have those X's lined up, very easy to do. I will take the jig and put it right into the corner of my Misty stamping tool. When I have it in the corner, I'll close the door on my Misty, which will grab the stamp and then I can remove the guide. Now, if you want to do any kind of stamping of a smaller piece of cardstock, you can just glue it to the, the jig or just tape it there temporarily. However, I want to do a big piece today. So I cut a perfect six by six square. You can do that. Anything smaller than that, you'll want to tape to the jig and use the jig for this. But I'm using a full six by six piece. That's usually what I do. And I'm stamping right on it. Let's first do an example where I use Distress Oxide inks. Remember, these are the inks that have some dye properties and some pigment properties. That little bit of pigment property to it allows the color to sit on top of the cardstock and show up a bit. If this were a regular dye ink, it would kind of disappear because it would absorb into the paper and dry. Now I rotated my cardstock one turn and I'm stamping again, but this time with Cracked Pistachio, a different color. Then I rotated my cardstock a third time. This time I'm stamping with uh, peacock feathers and I'll stamp that. But notice this color really matches the background too much. The peacock uh, feathers color is the same as my cardstock. So I'm changing that color and stamping it again. This time salty ocean. And you can see it kind of glows on there. When you tilt it in the light, you see it more. So I'm using a dark color cardstock. So this really stands out. Last, I'm using just straight up white pigment ink. I thought it'd be fun to have that in there too. White pigment ink looks gorgeous stamped on any dark color of cardstock. And look how beautiful that is. It has a little bit of a glow to it, but our next example will have more. It's a great way to create a colorful background and use a darker or vibrant color of cardstock. Now let's do the same thing, but first stamp with white ink. So I'm inking up my stamp with white, or my stamp with white ink, stamping it, then I rotate my cardstock one turn and I repeat that. And I'm going to do that four times. 
until I have all four positions stamped, which will cover this entire piece of cardstock with white images. So everything is stamped with white. Looks great as is, right? This would be a great background to leave it as is. But I wanna do that glow technique, so I'm adding color on top of this. For the best results, I like using the white pigment ink first and then oxide ink on top. However, if you don't have oxide ink, stay tuned. We'll do more with that. So here I'm putting cracked pistachio right on top of the white. Then I'll clean my stamp, rotate it once. This time I'm doing twisted citron. I'm using the same colors I used on the last example so we can do side by side. Look how much that twisted citron looks like it glows against that dark cardstock. I turned it again, this time I'm doing the Salty Ocean, and I'll stamp that. Then I won't stamp it the fourth time because I want to leave that bright white that has already been stamped. Now all of this has a pigment ink in it, right? You want to heat set this to make sure that you don't smudge it or give it some time to dry. Now let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. Remember the cardstock is the same color and I use the same color of inks. On the left, all the colored inks are only oxide. On the right, I stamped everything first with white and then stamped the oxide on top. And you can see how that's more vibrant. It glows more against that background. It really is a personal preference and depends on the card you're making, but I wanted to show you the comparison. Adding the white ink underneath your oxide inks really makes it pop. You can especially see this with the salty ocean blue on there. It's much brighter when you stamp first with the white ink underneath it. Okay, let's do a few examples of this white ink underneath the oxide ink. Then I'll go on to dye inks, in case you don't have oxide. Here I've already stamped all the images with white ink. Now I'm stamping on top of it with oxide ink. This is picked raspberry. I'm using kind of a plum color of cardstock. It definitely is most effective on darker colors of cardstock or vibrant colors. I'll show you black in a little bit. Here I'm putting a shaded lilac onto this plum colored cardstock and look at how it really pops on there. So I'm rotating it again, cleaning my stamp, and this time I'm using tumbled glass, which is a very light blue ink. So you wanna try different colors of ink on different colors of cardstock to see what really stands out. I really like these lighter color inks on top of the white on this bright plum color cardstock. I wish you could see it in real life because when you tilt it in the light different ways, different colors pick up more of the light and it really has this glow effect. I also wanted to show you that this technique does work on lighter colors of cardstock. So I have a light blue cardstock here that I've already stamped all the images with white. For the first impression, I stamped with picked raspberry, and this time I'm using wild honey. Now the advantage of stamping the white underneath the color on this light color cardstock is the color ink that you put on top stays true. Sometimes if you stamp a colored ink on top of a light color cardstock, that light color cardstock kind of shows through and changes the color of the ink a bit, kind of tints it whatever color your cardstock is. But by putting down the white pigment ink first and now oxide ink on top, you can see how vibrant the colors stay with that beautiful light blue background. So if you're going to do any kind of colored stamping on a colored cardstock, this is definitely a trick to try. This doesn't have the glow effect that it does on the darker colors of cardstock, but I still think it's pretty. Since I really like the results of the white pigment ink with the oxide ink on top, I did a bunch of examples. Here's on bright blue, and then here's an example on like an indigo blue. Look at how that tumbled glass looks like it glows. Now this next one, I love this bright pink background. I did white ink first, and then on top of that, I did spiced marmalade, abandoned coral, and a little bit of squeezed lemonade, lemonade, and it really looks like it's glowing on there. Okay, now that we've covered white pigment ink with oxide ink on top, let me show you what you can do with white pigment ink with dye ink on top, because most people have dye ink. So I've already stamped all of my images with white pigment ink and I've let it dry. Now I am stamping on top of it with dye ink. This is Concord and Ninth. This is the light sprout color, a very light green. And you can see that it starts to glow and the green shows up when you stamp on top of the white. If I didn't have the white there, you wouldn't see that light green on that dark color cardstock. Now this time I picked a color too close to the background. So I changed it, I went with a much darker color. And even when I put a darker color on top of the white pigment ink, it still helps it to look like it's glowing and it stands out more. 
I rotated it, and this time I used Soft Lilac from Hero Arts. And check out how that glows too. Then I left the last set of flowers just plain white pigment ink. So you can stamp with dye inks on dark colored cardstocks, but first you want to stamp with the white pigment ink, and look how beautiful it is. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, we have white pigment ink with oxide ink on top, the one I did earlier. Then on the right, we have white pigment ink with dye ink on top. It is a more subtle look, but that's because dye ink doesn't sit on top of the cardstock. It's only just sitting on top of the white pigment ink, so it doesn't show up as much, but it definitely gives that glow look. Let's do another side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, we have white pigment ink with oxide colored ink on top. On the right, we have white pigment ink with dye ink on top. And you can see the colors show up and glow on black color cardstock. The oxides just tend to be a little more vibrant because oxide inks have that pigment property to them that sits on top of the cardstock and doesn't let as much of the cardstock below show through. But both are effective and hopefully you have a white pigment ink and one of these type of inks so you can try out this technique. I will say if you want really vibrant color on dark colored cardstock, your best bet is using colored embossing powder, but I don't have a lot of color embossing powders and I don't think most people do, so this is a fun option and it looks like it glows. Before we move on, I did want to mention that you could use oxide inks or dye inks on white cardstock to get colorful results with this turnabout stamp. Look at these colorful backgrounds. And there are coordinating dyes to cut out the different flowers in it, so you could use those separately if you want. I'll be using the backgrounds as a whole today, and mostly the backgrounds on darker colors of cardstock, but I wanted to show you the versatility of the stamp and die set. Now let's take some of those glow stamping backgrounds and turn them into cards. I have a bunch of different techniques for you. On this particular card, I'm doing an acetate overlay on the front, so it looks like our embellishments are floating. For this, I'm using the new Concord and Ninth Flower Shaker Shapes. Now these are large images and there are coordinating dies available. And these would be fun to create shaker uh, cards with the image inside of the window. However, today I'm gonna use it in some other ways, including this acetate overlay card. I'll use this stamp set a few times through this video. Let's start with this large flower. I've never used it before, so I like to take a dry cloth and rub it on the surface of the stamp just to prep it so it takes the ink better. I'm stamping with this with a light kind of purple ink, and I'm using a little tool to help put pressure on my Misty stamping tool. I like to use this tool whenever I have a large image like this one. Now I'll link to that little tool below if you want to check it out. Now I've stamped this with purple, but I wanted to add a little pink to it so it better matches my background. So I'm using pink dye ink and a blending brush, and I'm just putting ink on the stamp kind of towards the center. And this helps me to get a multicolor image that looks like the ink is very blended, but really I'm just using this trick of inking up my stamp with a blending tool. Easy to do, and the more times you do it, the more vibrant it gets. I then use the coordinating dye to cut it out. I use that same coordinating die to cut two more from white cardstock, and I'll glue those behind our stamped flower. This will just give dimension to that flower and make it stand out. You could put foam tape behind there, but I find that doesn't hold up very well through the mail. I also white heat emboss sending smiles from the same stamp set onto a small plum circle, and that'll go in the center of the flower. Next, let's get our acetate overlay ready. I'm using a Hero Arts acetate note card. These are four and a quarter by five and a half inches and they're already folded, but you could create your own acetate uh, card out of a sheet of acetate. Now I cut a lot of the back of this card off and I'll save it for a different project. So now I just have a little flap on the back of this acetate piece. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches with a little flap folded on the back. Now on the back of that flap, I'm putting a piece of double-sided tape. This is Lawn Fawn tape. It's nice and strong. And I also have our little purple background here. This is cut again to about four by five and a quarter inches. Along one edge, I'm putting a piece of that double-sided tape and I'm tucking that into our overlay. So it gets glued right into that little flap. So I'm pressing that down onto there. If any of the acetate is too big, you can just trim the excess off now. By the way, these acetate note cards I have been using for probably 10 years now, and they're great for a lot of techniques. Now on the back of this, and including that little flap right there, I'm putting that double-sided tape, 
and then I will put this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. To make sure it's centered, I'm using one of these corner helpers. That's not what they're called, but that's what I call them. I'll link to them below. You can get them on Etsy. I'm using this tiny little corner. In my Misty stamping tool, I have my white note card and I have the corner right up against the corner of my Misty. Then I will take our pink piece with the acetate overlay and tuck it right into that corner and then press down. Because our pink piece with the acetate is smaller than the note card, now we have that nice white trim around the edge. That little corner helper just helped me to get that even placement right centered on that card. And there are different size corner helpers if you have smaller pieces. I'll use them again in a future video. Okay, so now I can put my flower on there. It already cut off a little bit off the left. And I put that right onto the acetate. Next, I'm using this Lawn Fawn Happy Hibiscus die set. I really thought these went well with the backgrounds that we're doing today. I love this set. It has fun faux stitching on it. But for this card, I only used the large leaf. And you can see I added that onto our acetate over there by the large flower. Next, I have this leftover strip from the background we made earlier. I'm using small circle dies to cut out the center of the flowers from that strip. And then I'll add them onto our card. So I'm not letting that little piece go to waste. I'll cut a few different circles from here. I'm going to glue these circles onto our acetate overlay so it looks like they're floating. I'll also add some gems there. I'm using my Trinity Stamps pickup stick, which is the tool that I have here. On one side, there's a piercer, and on the other side is the tip that allows you to pick up pieces and add them to your card. So here you can see the little circles that I die cut, and I'm just putting a little bit of liquid glue onto the acetate and then popping the little circle die cuts on it. So this acetate overlay just makes it look like all those embellishments are floating. Now I'm using some Trinity Stamp Pearls. I am hoarding these. I have lots of these, but I use them on almost every card. So I have lots of colors of Trinity Stamp, and I am adding little dots of liquid adhesive and then using my pickup stick to add the pearls into the adhesive. Now I'm adding pinks to this to match, but keep in mind, you could always just get white pearls and then color them to match your project using permanent markers, Copic markers, or alcohol inks. So here's our completed card. You can see how that acetate overlay makes those embellishments look like they're floating. And it also makes the flower stand out a little bit more from the background. Underneath the acetate, you have that background where we did the glow stamping technique. And some of those purples look like they have a subtle glow against the plum background. Now this card does open up like a normal four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. The overlay is just on there for some added fun. So this is something that you could do with any products you have, and I thought I'd demonstrate another example of an acetate overlay using one of these backgrounds. And on this card, I'm gonna show you a trick of taking two die-cut words and combining them to create something new. I'm really liking this new die set from Concord and Ninth called All For You Dies. It has this large U word, and then there's the words for, celebrate, thank, and miss. I thought it would be fun to combine thank and miss to get thanks. And I'll use the U later in this video, so stay tuned for that. So here I'm cutting the S off the word miss, and I'm going to add that S onto the word thank. So I don't have to use the word you with thank, I could instead just do thanks. So I thought I'd show you how sometimes I do surgery to put die cuts together. I have a sticky mat here, you can see it's been used a lot, so the stick is less, but it still works great. I'm putting the S right next to the word thank, and then I will put some glue on top of the S and on top of the end of that K. Then I'll take another S that is a little bit longer. So there's a little bit more of a tail at the beginning of the S. And I'll put that on top. And that'll kind of be uh, the connection between the thank and the S that we added on. The sticky mat is just holding those there while they dry. So I'll leave that to dry. And once it's dry, I have the word thanks. So think of different ways you can put words together, especially if there's multiple words in one die set. Now I decided I wanted this to be black, but I had already done it in white. So all I did was took a black pen, and put black right on the top surface. And what's cool is the side of it is white, but the top is black. So I'm using the side of this black brush tip to color it. I also die cut a bunch of flowers from both uh, Concord and Ninth die sets and that Lawn Fawn Happy Hibiscus. And I'm going to glue all of this onto this front of this acetate overlay. 
So that card that you see there is put together exactly like I did for the last one. It is a white four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And then I have that pink background with the overlay attached to it and that's slightly smaller. So this time I'll have the word and some flowers and pearls kind of floating on that acetate overlay. So here's a look at the completed card. I did add a Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip right under the word thanks. I also added some white leaves and some pearls too. I decided not to add green leaves because I felt it was too much with the colorful background, so white seemed like a good option. Now this is a fun way to use a colorful background like this because a lot of it is showing. You add to it, but you're not covering much of it up. And the overlay makes it look like it's floating there. Okay, let's do another example. This time I'm doing the easel card using that U die set and one of the backgrounds we made earlier. If you've never done the easel card, I'll link to an easel card video here at the top right. Now for this particular one, I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock that is 11 inches by four and a quarter inches. I'll score this at two and three quarter inches and also at five and a half inches, which folds it right in half. So this will form a four and a quarter by five and a half inch easel card. See how easy that is? I also have one of my inked backgrounds from before that I have cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'll score that right down the center and fold it in half. I then trimmed a little bit off the sides so that I could glue it on the front of our card and a little white trim would show. I like to put the score lines on these separately and then glue them together so that the score lines line, line up and that allows the fold to work really nicely. Now I have the letters U using that all for you die set I showed you earlier. I cut three of each letter and glued them on top of each other so they're nice and thick. And now I'm putting glue only on the bottom of these letters. So it's getting glued only to the front of that card below that score line. That way when we pop up the front of the card for the easel function, those letters will stand up and it's such a cool look. So I'm gonna give that a little bit of time to dry and I even put tape on it to hold them in place. Once it's dry, I added some pink and green leaves and flowers, making sure only to glue to the white letters, so these will stand up too. I also die cut the word thank from blue cardstock, but after I did it in blue, I felt like it didn't stand out enough, so instead of recutting it, I'm just coloring on top with black ink. Now this thank was three die cuts thick, so I cut it three times from blue and glued it together, so I didn't wanna to have to do that whole process again. I put adhesive on the back of that and now I'm gluing the thank right onto the U letters also. To make sure it stays put, I just put a piece of tape on it while it dries. Here I'm opening my new pack of the Essential Gemstones from Trinity Stamps. These are actually my favorites of all the ones they carry. They put them in a bundle, so if you wanna see the favorites, you can. Uh, there's clear and silver and black and white pearls, all the best ones that I like the most. So I'll link to that bundle if you wanna check it out and I will show it closer in another video. But here I just wanted to show you that I used the white pearls from that, they're called Something New. And then I also used some yellow pearls too. The reason I like these white pearls is they have like an iridescent finish, which is really fun and picks up the colors around it. All right, here is the completed card. Sorry, I'm going through this so fast, but I have a lot to, st to share still. Here you can see how those letters kind of look like they're floating on the top. And that is because this is an easel card. Things are only glued below the score line so that when you fold it up, those letters prop up. Now inside of the card, I put a sentiment strip that says you're the best ever and added an extra flower. And that sentiment strip allows you to prop up the front of the card on it so it stands like an easel on display. These are very easy to make and you can put all kinds of things on it. Again, I've done an easel card video, link it up here on the top right if you want to see that. Let's do another quick easel card. This one I put together in the exact same way as the last one. You got the fold right down the middle. This time I created that large flower using the stamp set and dies I showed you earlier. And I only glued the leaves to the bottom half and the top of the flower onto the leaves. So the top of that flower is not glued onto the card. So when we prop up the easel card, it'll stand up. And by the way, here you can get a closer look at the different pearls and gems that are included in that essentials pack, which are again, are just my favorites that I mentioned to Trinity Stamps. So they put that bundle together. Now I know not everybody likes adding pearls and gems, but it's something I have loved to do for a long time and I do on almost every card. 
I also thought it'd be fun to have some little pearls floating above the flower to look like they're sticking out from the flower. So I'm cutting some thin acetate strips just from some scraps and I am taping them to the back of our flower. So there are three thin acetate strips sticking out from the top of the flower. On the tip of those acetate strips, I'm putting some liquid adhesive and then I'm putting a large pearl on it. Now when this dries, I can trim off the extra acetate from above the pearl and these pearls will stand up with the flower and look like they're floating up there, which I think just adds some fun to the card. So here is the completed card overall. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I again put a sentiment strip on the inside, which allows you to prop the easel against it. And check that out. Look at how those pearls are floating up above the flower. I just thought that was a fun way to really make the card stand out a bit more. I also scattered some pearls in the background just to make the background stand out a bit more. I like how this has that glow stamping on it. It looks like those image ha images have a subtle glow against that bright blue background. Simple card design, but we added a lot of interest with the glow stamping and the easel effect. Okay, let's do a really simple card, but add something special to it with an action wobble. I haven't used an action wobble in a long time, and I thought it would be fun for this card. Action wobbles are springs that flatten down and then they pop up and wiggle. There's a sticker on both sides so you can stick it on the back of a large die cut or stamped image like this and then stick that onto your card. This way when it's added this flower will kind of wobble up there. It'll pop up when you take it out of the envelope and wiggle around which I think is really fun. I often use these on the back of heads of critters or on different things I want to wiggle, but I thought it'd be fun for this flower also. I also used my Arteza white gel pen to add white dots to the leaves. This is the gel pen I've been reaching for more lately because I find that it's a little more reliable than my other white gel pens. Finally, I added some little pearls to the background and here you can see the final card. I love how that flower wiggles there and it does flatten nicely to go into a regular envelope. The overall size of this, again, is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and it really didn't take that long to put together. By the way, the background on this one was one where I stamped with white pigment ink and dye ink on top of it. So you can still see it has that glow effect, even though I didn't use oxide inks on it. All right, here's another very simple card. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card, but my flower hangs off the side. Because my flower hangs off the side, it won't fit into a regular envelope. So what I like to do is take a five by seven envelope and cut it down to change the size. So here's a five by seven envelope. I'm holding the card at the center so I know how much to cut off the edges. So I, here I cut about a quarter of an inch off both sides of the envelope. Now I'll fold open the envelope and put double-sided tape there to reseal the sides. You could use double-sided tape or liquid adhesive for this. I then decided to cut a little bit off the bottom so that it would even be a better fit. Now I could have just put this card into a regular five by seven envelope and left it at that, but by making the envelope custom size, it makes the card a little more special. And I also like when my card fits nicely into the envelope and doesn't slide around much. So changing a larger envelope is definitely something that is worth the time to do. And it's much faster than making a new envelope from scratch. I will link below to the five by seven envelopes that I like that are colored. All right, here is the completed card. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, but that flower hangs off the edge. Now in the background, I added some pearls, but I also die cut some of the little shapes off the extra scrap and I popped those in it. You see all those popped up circles? Those are just die cut from that extra stamp scrap like I did on that first acetate overlay card. I like how adding that bit on the background makes the background stand out more and adds something interesting to the simple card design. Before we go, I wanted to show you a couple more completed cards. I didn't do anything fancy here. I used a lot of the products I've shown you, and these are just flat cards. Now on this one, I really wanted to use a new stamp set from My Favorite Things so called Something to Squawk About. I really like the images on here. They're small, but they're fun to color. You can get really colorful with those birds. And since they're not too big, even I can handle coloring them. So I stamped, colored, and die cut a bird and some leaves. And I added them to my card along with the large U from Concord and Knight that I showed you earlier. 
If you look closely, there's also the thank right on top of the U. I wanted that to be subtle, so the focus would be on the background and the images we added. I stamped a toucan of appreciation and put that right below it. I also added some large pearls and small pearls kind of scattered on the leaves and below the bird. I like that with these large words, you can kind of create a focal point and then add some other images on it. However, I still have a lot of that glow stamped background showing. So on this one, I had stamped the images with white ink and then oxide ink on top. And you can see how they look like they glow against that dark teal background. This would be a fun design to add any little images there on top of the Y. You can change this up very easily. All right, here is an example where I used one of our black backgrounds with the glow stamping on top. Very simple card. I used the You Are Simply Amazing, and that is from one of the coordinating die sets I showed you earlier in this video. I added our background onto a white note card, and to really make that background pop even more, I added little white dots with a gel pen. I could have used white pearls, but using a white gel pen can be just as effective and have less dimension. I just had an idea. I think it'd be fun to add some shimmer to the glow stamping to really make it stand out even more. Didn't think of it for this video, but it's definitely something to try. And the best part, look at all the leftover pieces I have for future cards. All these leftover strips here I can build up to create like a color block background on a card. Lots of fun ways to use them. That's why it's always good to make lots of backgrounds while you're doing one. All right, there you have it. A fun way to use your inks in your vibrant or dark color card stocks to get a glow stamping effect. Really cool, especially in real life, so I hope you'll give it a try. Just use white pigment ink with oxide ink on top or white pigment ink and dye ink on top. You could even use white pigment ink with colored pigment ink on top. So try what you have. I bet it'll work great. If you're interested in the products that I did feature today, they are linked below in my YouTube description. You can also go over to my blog to find photos of all these cards, much more information, and you can even bookmark the video to save it for later. Here in the middle, I have a couple other videos to check out with similar techniques and also showing how to make those easel cards in a closer in-depth look. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again soon.